thank you for coming. Um, we had a program here last night, so we have a lot of space here. So maybe if you feel too far away, pull your chairs up. And I would have done this, and I, I just now see it seems like we'll be a little far away. Um, our speaker last night was talking about breath. <laughs> Relaxes you. Uh, enough of that. Um, I'm Bob Jolly, Athlean Director, to the few of you who I don't readily recognize. Thank you for coming. Um, I want to introduce my friend and the director of the Miller Repper Center, Dawn Holtz, who will introduce Venerable Tendar. Here is Dawn Holtz. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Dawn. I'm the director of Miller Repa Center um, in Barnet. Um, if you haven't been out, please come by and see us. Um, just a few quick things. Um, I have some information in the back. Um, if you feel to pick it up on your way out, it's there. Um, we are very excited to have Venerable Losang Tendar with us. Um, Venerable Tendar is um, a board member and resident at our monastery in France, Nalanda Monastery, which he can tell you a little bit about. There's also some information back there. Um, he's also the director of the IMI, um, which stands for the International Mahayana Institute. It's our community of monks and nuns um, that, you know, within our organization. So um, we're very excited to have him here with us for a few, um, few more days. And I just wanted to let you all know that we will also be in Mount Pillar tomorrow night um, at 6.30, doing another talk there. So you're welcome to join that as well. And then on um, Sunday, we will be having a fundraiser brunch coffee house type thing at Millerapa Center. Everyone's welcome to come. That'll be from 11 to 2. And that information is back there as well. If you'd like to join, um, please feel free to come on by. So I think the weather's going to be good, so it shouldn't be a problem getting up our driveway. <laughs> um, so I will turn it over to Venerable Tendak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, as organizers, uh, Library and uh, Mela River Center, for uh, having me, uh, welcoming me here so warmly in uh, Vermont. And um, yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, I hope um, we make it a little bit in, uh, in a beneficial time together. I hope. Um, um, some uh, wise words will come from my mouth, I don't, mouth, I don't know. I, I apologize already for my accent, because of course I'm from Europe. Uh, I'm from Netherlands, actually, so I've, uh, really <laughs> um, I'm sure if I live here one year, I, I will change my accent. In general, I adapt a little bit. Even in France, I speak already differently, but still, I uh, hope you're, it's uh, not uh, disturbing you. So also, because I'm not really native English, so sometimes I might use <laughs> the wrong words. So anyway, maybe um, usually in uh, Buddhism, we start with it, um, yeah, setting our motivation. We, we call this setting our motivation before we do any action with uh, body, speech, and mind, and, uh, or a particular uh, activity like uh, tonight, listening and uh, uh, reflecting on uh, what you hear. Uh, we set our motivation that we, um, that we don't, um, are not motivated only to have a, just a comfortable, comfortable night, uh, but also that we try to become wise and more patient and more understanding, more loving, more kind and so forth. So that we develop our inner qualities, so that we use our time tonight. Um, uh, um, so whatever what comes up in our mind, that we use it uh, to def to, for our own development. And in Buddhism, we, uh, we, we believe that we can all become Buddhas, this kind of perfect mind, very uh, all-encompassing uh, um, uh, mind. So that, that's the ultimate goal. But of course, we make uh, small steps, so yeah, we can set our motivation to make this um, uh, very beneficial. Uh, so we can do very, very short meditation on, um, uh, uh, on our breath, just to arrive just feel relaxed, so you don't have to change your breath, you just uh, become aware that you are breathing. Just uh, this practice is meant to forget the past and forget the future, you're just in the moment, and everything is okay, what's ever there. You 
you check our body here, we feel relaxed on the feet, on the legs, upper legs. Our belly. Our arms. Our hands. Our shoulder. Our face. feel relaxed, we can come back. So, I think uh, and, uh, I was asked to tell a little bit about uh, my life and why I became monk and um, yeah, so um, and what life is to be monk uh, in our tradition. So, do a little bit like this, otherwise I tend only to look to the right side. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I, I doubt a little bit about my... What country were you Sorry, I, I'm born from in the Netherlands, I know, in Europe, yes, yeah. It's a very green country like uh, Vermont. I heard the nickname of Vermont is gr the Green Mountain State. <laughs> so yeah, in the Netherlands is the Green Flat State. It's complete flat, so it's a, that's the big difference. Anyway, it's not much bigger than Vermont. I think one and a half time bigger. Anyway, so um, as I was asked to to tell a little bit uh, where I came from, I, I keep it very short. My um, my early life, because uh, I'm not so sure, 100% sure if people really can relate to it, but uh, I'm born in the, in the north of the Netherlands, where it's quite countryside. It's uh, um, in the 60s. I was born in 61, so I'm in the meantime 58. Um, and it was a very Christian uh, area. Our village was also, I think, 90% went all to the same church on Sunday. And 5% uh, went to a church in another town. So it was very, uh, very uh, Christian and in the 60s. And um, yeah, my father was uh, selling um, uh, milk and dairy products uh, along the road to all the farms. It was a lot of farms. It was, uh, it's very flat. So it was uh, in the Netherlands, very famous to take land from the, from the sea. And, uh, this, this village uh, also was only started in around 1900. It was before there was nothing. And then slowly to start the village because they, they take land from the sea, so not a very big history. So, um, but anyway, many farms, very big land, and uh, anyway, it influenced in me in that way that I always went with my father when I was seven, eight, nine, ten years old with my father and visited all these uh, isolated farms. And uh, at that time, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I saw many people functioning or relating to me in a certain way that. Uh, um, yeah, and the village life was very, very, um, yeah, very uh, calm. It was a slow life there. And um, any, anyway, it was very also protected. Uh, almost everyone was, uh, was uh, Christian. So there was not, um, also not a lot of aggression or uh, very strange things happening in my village. It gave a very good uh, base. My grandmother, father, mother lived on the other side of the road. Uh, uh, I had four younger sisters and one younger brother, so there was always a lot of activity in the house. So, um, also, the village was a lot of, uh, you know, yeah, uh, people were active in our sports and in, in clubs around the church and around um, culture, so uh, there were always things to do. 
And um, anyway, it gave my life a very uh, special, also the religious side of life. Uh, I, I like to go to church very much. Uh, um, yeah, it was a really uh, uh, a strong community sense. So also in my teenager's life, uh, it continued like that. And we came in the 70s, uh, things started a little bit loosen. In the 60s, uh, things were a little bit very strict, you know. So. Um, so I went to high school. I did not pass really. So, but, so yeah. But uh, anyway, in general, I was uh, quite uh, happy, and also, uh, yeah. So I, um, because uh, uh, religious give you a lot of things. Like uh, um, anyway, the the fact that you that. Uh, um, yeah, I was very inspired uh, by uh, Jesus. Like uh, I sing uh, uh, when we, I was 50, 60, 70, we sing also in a gospel group, you know, so uh, all kind of text which, uh, yeah, touches your heart. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so um, yeah, so um, around 1920, I moved to the city. Then it was more. Uh, uh, even if I did not pass my high school, I, I, I continued. I started, uh, looked for a job, very simple job, an administrative job, and uh, worked 40 hours a week. And in the evening, uh, two evenings, I, I did sports. I loved sports very much, a kind of basketball. And um, other two evenings, I did high school. I finished high school, and then. Uh, um, when I was, I think, 23, 24, I quit one day working and uh, I went to a higher professional education for management. So um, I developed myself slowly more. But um, in the weekends, I, I also partied a lot. So it was uh, with, because it was a university city. Maybe it's a little bit like Burlington. I, th I think like maybe a, it's, a, it's a, maybe three times bigger, but a lot of students. It's, I think it's the younger city of the Netherlands. And um, yeah, so uh, at that time, I um, yeah, I was only focused on on uh, the I myself, you know. Like uh, I worked in order to have money and to have fun, and um, I was not particular so materialistic that I was so interested in having a Ferrari or uh, expensive watches. But um, I lived for myself in a certain way, uh, uh, especially in the weekend with all the students. Um, um, when I was 25, I passed the uh, school and uh, I, I, uh, I could even go to university. So well, all my friends stopped <laughs> almost the uh, university I, I, I started. So, um, um, yeah, so um, it was a lot of uh, fun, but um, um, yeah, so, but also. Um, and I forgot all those periods, I think that for 10 years I forgot church and, uh, you know, all the, uh, that side of life and uh, I engaged completely in a, um, yeah, a more hedonistic style, a lifestyle. So um, by the time I was 30, I, I really uh, started to reflect again on life and uh, so what, what, uh, what, what makes life uh, meaningful. Um, because I, I, I saw that in the meantime I had my own house and uh, um, and uh, yeah you know like but there seems not to get um, be satisfaction in everything you get it's like uh, anyway so I, I felt still a little bit uh, uh, empty and so um, then uh, yeah I, I looked in different religions I learned anthroposophy uh, um, in uh, Hinduism. I read something about Buddhism, about Buddhism, Hinduism, Muslim, and uh, communism. Also, like uh, political systems, and um, so like it was a period of five years. I, I went to uh, look to everywhere a little bit, like what is useful or what, um, how do people live, and, and what uh, what does it mean, what what they write or what they think. So. Um, yeah, so on one point, uh, uh, by the time I finished university, I, uh, I thought like, oh, this now for the first time I can uh, spend money, go outside of uh, Europe. Um, so where do I want to go? So, uh, and uh, yeah, one, one girlfriend of mine, she, she, uh, she had always uh, since young a uh, strong connection with Indians and the Aztecs and uh, especially the, the Mexican Indians. And um, 
And then a friend of mine uh, I was talking with, he, he always had a connection with uh, Russia. Uh, he read from s very young books about Russia. So I thought, like, where do I have connection with? So at one point I focused and um, <laughs> I turned uh, the globe uh, in, before my eyes. And I thought, like, oh, Mexico, yeah, nice. Africa, no. Australia, maybe later. Uh, then uh, Himalaya, and I said, yeah, Himalaya. Yeah, I, do, I became very happy immediately. So I thought, oh, yeah, I have to go. Uh, that's where I want to go. If, if I go now out of Europe, that's where, where I would like uh, to go. So I would like to prepare. I, I looked a little bit like, uh, uh, like shall I study a little bit more about Hinduism or Buddhism? Um, I read that there were a lot of uh, slaughter festivals within Hinduism, so that blocked me uh, to develop m myself more in that uh, direction. And uh, in Buddhism, I thought, oh yeah, the, the, I've seen one time the, the movie Little Buddha. Uh, oh, I like that, yeah. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so it was, uh, and then, um, yeah, I also wondered, uh, because why did I drive a little bit away from Christianity? It was one of the reasons was that I could hardly believe that there's on, only one holy being in the three, four, five, six thousand years, you know? So I found, I thought like uh, there should be, if God has compassion, there should always be kind of holy beings around us, you know? So, and uh, who, who in this lifetime for me would be, who could I, who could I recognize? I, I don't think you can recognize everyone, but... Uh, depends on, uh, uh, yeah, uh, fixed ideas you have in your mind. But um, yeah, it's not like uh, I think Mandela from South Africa. I think, uh, yeah, how, what I know of him, I think, uh, wow, it could be. And, uh, and then I thought, yeah, the Dalai Lama, I think like, uh, yeah, he gives his whole life uh, only for others and in, in many different ways. I didn't know so much uh, actually at that moment of the Dalai Lama, but I heard a few times him talking and um, yeah, I was quite impressed uh, um, by his uh, modesty and, and the other hand that he knows so much and the uh, other hand that, um, yeah, it seemed he, he worked uh, 24 hours a day uh, just to inspire people in all kinds of different ways. So I thought, yeah, maybe that, that could be holy beings. And um, anyway, so that was one of the reasons. Um, so I started to read. And um, so in order to prepare for my journey to Nepal, I uh, looked for a course. And um, so I, I, I called different people. And I said, do you know something about Buddhism? Do you know where I can follow a course? And they said, yeah, in the middle of the Netherlands, there's a, a center. And they had organized summer courses. And um, yeah, because I said, well, what I want is I, I want uh, an integral, not only knowing what the Buddha has said, uh, also uh, experience, uh, experience what the Buddha has said. So I want to do meditations and uh, I want to have uh, teachings <laughs> and, um, and uh, be able to ask questions. So, and they said, yeah, this summer course is very good. It's two teachings a day, three meditations a day. And uh, in the evening you have discussions and so in '95, I, uh, I signed up for this uh, course. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. So if you ask me what drove me, drive, drove me is um, the, the kind of an unsatisfactory mind I have. Uh, then in, in this course, I um, uh, there was a teacher who taught and. Um, who really touched my heart because I felt really every time he is talking about love, compassion, and all the instructions he gives, uh, he tries to practice himself. And that touched me very much. Uh, in the first place, of course, I was already impressed by how much knowledge uh, this teacher had. Um, because I read already some books and I didn't understand what the Buddha actually was saying. Uh, and the, the Buddha says, ah, karma exists. And then he says, things don't exist from its own side. So I, I didn't know I, I this, what's, what's, what's meant here, you know? I also thought like, uh, oh yeah, every, you know, I want to be happy, so I, I want to take care for myself, but I also want to help others, you know? And this I got from my youth, like, uh, you know, uh, even though we were Protestant, but uh, Mother Teresa, for example, we, everyone praised her, you know, to being good for others. And, and so it's a good feature. And um, yeah, so I thought like, uh, yeah, but, but, how, but how do you deal with that? Uh, taking care for yourself and being good for others, you know, like uh, how do you make choices in life? And uh, anyway, due to the presentation of the teachings, I, I start to understand that 
uh, do that in order, for example, to help others, uh, you have to take, help yourself first. Like, uh, if you want to help a beggar who has no money, you have need to have some money. And in order to ha help a blind person, it's it's better that you have good health and that you can see. Otherwise, it's a blind helping a blind is not always so. It's not the best, you know. So you you. Um, uh, you need to you need to wish good wishes for yourself uh, as a base as well in order uh, in order to help others and in order to um, yeah to be um, yeah to help others to, to uh, uh, for their welfare you, you have to make very good wishes to yourself so I got all these kind of answers in uh, in um, in uh, this course um, and I was very surprised, but after five, six days, I, I really felt uh, coming home, like uh, in uh, in the center, like uh, like this was all what I was looking for. I was looking for this integration, um, uh, for the best of humanity. I, in the meantime, I had studied uh, social sciences, so the all the uh, as far as I could. Uh, um, understand science. I mean, there's so much science. So, but anyway, what what, what uh, I studied, um, and there were these disagree disagreements in uh, in how the uh, how the Buddha approached uh, reality and how scientists in general approach reality. But there was no um, contradiction contradictory. Uh, um, uh, in terms of uh, that, that uh, everyone wants to strive for happiness, so the the the, the teachings which were given in the um, in the institute there was um, um, yeah I, I I really felt like uh, uh, I got homework for the rest of my life. You know, there was really teachings about uh, yeah how you understand uh, the wisdom realizing emptiness, and I thought like wow, uh, you know, this is. Uh, this is really food for thought for a long time. And uh, yeah, developing love and compassion, that uh, the whole meaning of Buddha's teachings at the end is that uh, we change slowly over time our heart. Um, and, um, yeah, and as I told you already, my background, like uh, I lived a long time for myself, you know, it was a kind of, there was one person in, in the universe and, and of course I did never, de it was never criminal or something or uh, did too much bad things, but, um, I most I thought only the interest of myself, you know, in the in my functioning and um, yeah. Anyway, also in, during this uh, this teaching, uh, these weeks, we got the teachings on um, yeah the eightly worldly concerns, like uh, that this blocks are uh, uh, opening our heart to others. The eight worldly concerns is that you you strive the whole time for. Uh, being uh, rich or get things, and on the other hand, you try to avoid losing things. You strive the whole time to be praised. Uh, you, you, your mind goes up when you hear positive things about yourself, and, uh, and the mind goes down when you get criticized or people have commentary on you, or don't like your clothes even, or your car. And then, uh, yeah, we want to have a good uh, fame or reputation. You know, so like actually, all my sports was also in the context of uh, you know uh, get, getting being the best, you know, or getting competition, and um, yeah, when an other loses, you don't see that so much because uh, you you party because you you were the best. So, and I thought like yeah, the, my life has turned a, a lot around that things, you know. And um, yeah, and then the, the force of uh, is uh, that you strive the whole time for happiness and uh, for the, the for uh, pleasure, sens sensual pleasure. So uh, this is also very deep ingrained in us, isn't it? Like, uh, oh, you 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 feel a little bit like this, and then you you take shower just for pleasure or something, you know. So that, anyway, I, I, when I reflected on my life, I thought like, uh, wow. Um, you know, the, uh, to change all this, uh, this takes a long time. It's not, uh, oh, yeah, you, you, you get some knowledge and you get a bit inside how, how, how our mind functions. Um, because all, all this, did, uh, that life is only uh, around this, as many disadvantages, um, and blocks uh, the, the big love and compassion, which, we, we should, uh, which I, I have a kind of wish to develop this. So it's uh, really blocking. Uh, and um, anyway, this, this life is, uh, and I, 
but uh, anyway, at that moment only, I thought like, uh, yeah, I want to change this, you know, like, uh, um, and then I felt, because I felt coming home, like uh, the, this whole, all this teaching seemed uh, complete. Um, how to develop concentration, how to develop uh, the, this ethics, which I got from Christianity already. Um, uh, that ethics should be really the base of our functioning. Then um, uh, this big love, compassion, this altruism, this uh, wish, uh, um, yeah, to 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 benefit others, and um, uh, the wisdom realizing emptiness. How do things exist? Like how that, uh, does? Um, yeah, in a phenomena, is is there an ultimate existence in the phenomena in the in the carpet? Is there an ultimate existence in the carpet? Where is the carpet exactly, and is it always, uh, you know? So, um, um, so if you you look for it, can you can you find the essence of the carpet in the carpet? And uh, is it in the part, and is it in every part, or is it is the whole like set of parts? Or the, um, first, I thought, uh, oh, that's not so. You know, like uh, I talk with friends about sometimes about it, and with, uh, it was more like a joke. You know, like oh, yeah, it's it's interesting to think a little bit about it. You know, like I did not see so much uh, the relevance of it, but um, anyway. So the, at that moment, when I followed such a cause, I, uh, I I felt coming home, and then I really thought, like yeah, in order to change my mind very thoroughly, uh, I have to make other choices on longer term. So I. I spoke to with someone. I said, uh, "Yeah, but, um, actually, I saw this geshe. I saw this uh, this teacher. Uh, they call it a geshe in our tradition. It's uh, someone who has studied for 18 years, 20 years, and and is a Tibetan master. And uh, and, uh, and I really thought, like, I want to become like you. You know, like uh, I think now I, I have the goal of my life. I want to become wise uh, on one hand, and the other hand, I just want to be good. I want just to to my on my own level." I want to function uh, constructive, you know, um, in my profession or just in the shop, being kind to people and uh, to my family members, see what I can do. So um, that was my, t actually I thought like, that's my two goals. I want to become wise, I want to, and um, I want just to, uh, and I think uh, maybe, maybe the best way to do it is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, um, Become monk, you know. So yeah, I, I was not uh, bound to a person at that moment. So I'd, uh, I thought yeah, maybe this has a reason that I am <laughs> not uh, married or uh, engaged or whatever. So um, yeah, let's let's use this situation. And um, uh, yeah, even though I have to, yeah. So I, somehow the situation was there. So I started to talk with people about it, and then uh, they said, oh yeah, before becoming monk, uh, you know. Uh, it's best to to wait five years. It's it's like uh, you know. Otherwise, it can be an emotional decision, uh, like uh, yeah, like uh, when you're just young and you're in love, you, you you don't decide immediately to marry, even if it feels well. You still give time to check it out and, and see what kind of things you might have overlooked. You know. So uh, yeah. So I. Um, at uh, one point, yeah, I decided, uh, yeah, I want to become monk, and then, but they said, you have to wait five years. So my brother, he is very wise, so he's, he's um, at least very smart. He, he, um, he advised me to buy a house, so and, uh, the, t the prices were really rising, so I bought a house with money of the bank, and yeah, five years later, six years later, I could uh, sell it, so I had uh, some uh, pocket money for the, for the first five, six years to come, you know? So, um, yeah. So in those five years, I, uh, uh, I um, um, yeah, I followed teachings in the weekend. Um, I continued working. I put money aside. I, I learned already a little bit about karma, that what you create, uh, you have a bigger chance in the future that uh, things come on to your past. So um, I, I sponsored those years uh, some monks, in, uh, some poor monks in India. I thought, uh, now I have the money, so... Uh, um, I can sponsor them for the coming 10 years or something. So, yeah, so I created causes and conditions because I started to believe in causes and creating causes and conditions that somehow it comes later back. Um, and anyway, it's good to do. And uh, yeah, when you have the possibility, so why not? So, um, yeah, so then, uh, yeah, and I asked the teacher at one point, uh, because in the tradition is you, you ask the teacher, is, is it beneficial? You know, you don't decide yourself like, oh, no, I want to become monk. And, 
whatever, and uh, I find someone uh, who serves me and makes me monk. Uh, no, because this uh, whole being monk or nun is a, it's a tradition, from, a living tradition from the Buddha. It goes from master and master, and, and, uh, and also female masters or female masters. Uh, it, it's a lineage which can be traced back to the Buddha. So it's. Uh, um, so I asked uh, my teacher, could he ordain me? He said, no, best to go to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Go. Uh, he gives once a year opportunity, so most around uh, February, March. So best to go to India. So I took um, half a year to sell my house and, uh, and uh, uh, make the make the trip. I asked also, well, what shall I do after ordination? He said, ah, yeah, and this Dharma Center is very nice, but uh, yeah, you. You, you learn less, the uh, best is to live with other monks. So uh, there's a monastery in France, if there's a place for you, then it would be best to go there. So, um, yeah, so uh, I quit my job, I uh, sold my house, I uh, made my trip to Bodh Gaya, the place where the where Buddha uh, reached enlightenment, one of the four holy places in Buddhism. And uh, His Holiness was planning there to give her 10 days teachings. and. Uh, and there was a pre-ordination course. So there was some uh, 15 uh, other Westerners who were also interested, uh, half uh, ladies, half guys. So yeah, then, um, uh, but then His Holiness became very sick. So it, was, uh, <laughs> it did not really happen with His Holiness at that moment. Um, anyway, Lama Zoprambiche, uh, the, the spiritual uh, teacher of uh, the center where I went to, and also the spiritual teacher of Milarepa Center, um, he was around, and um, uh, anyway, so he, he sent me to his teacher, one of his teachers, uh, who is one of the highest uh, teachers of uh, Sira Monastery in the south of India, which is uh, one of the biggest monasteries with five, six thousand uh, monks. So, um, yeah, so I became ordained uh, at that time. So, uh, and then um, five, five, six weeks later, I, I still had a ticket uh, three weeks later, so I stayed a few weeks more in India. Then I, I went back to sell a few more things of my property, my uh, things. Then I arrived in a monastery in France, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it was, um, mm, yeah. And in the meantime, because I, I studied more and more, um, I, I came also in, our, in my inner life closer to become monk. I started to already reflect a little bit on what it does it mean. And so what is a good attitude? And uh, so what, um, what will be expected from me? So, yeah. And um, of course, in the meantime, I followed a lot of uh, teachings uh, regularly every month. I went one weekend to follow teachings. And um, yeah, and uh, yeah, actually, like in the life of the Buddha, when the Buddha became monk, uh, he, yeah, but the Buddha had a very rich life in a palace and uh, he was very protected because early in his life, uh, an, a clairvoyant person or a wise man, he, he, said, he, he, he predicted that. Uh, 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 at that time, he was called Gautama. Um, would be or an excellent, um, excellent uh, ruler, or he would be, become excellent in, spiritu in spiritual uh, regard. So, the father, of course, he wanted to his son to uh, to, uh, to, yeah, to be, follow him up and make his reign uh, successful. And so, uh, and that's why he was very much protect, uh, protected. But uh, at one point, uh, yeah, the Buddha, he, he, of uh, Gautama, he, he left the palace, and then he saw uh, the suffering, actually. Like, he saw a very sick person, he saw a dying person, he saw a um, very old person. And, um, and then he saw also a yogi who uh, tried to look for solutions for all these problems which we have, becoming old, becoming sick. Uh, so there were already people interested in spiritual life, and, and the Buddha saw this. So, and um, so then, uh, at one point, he left, and of course, the, 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 no one of the, the people around him were happy with it. And uh, anyway, this is a little bit in my family, of course, like the same because. Uh, uh, I have four sisters and a brother, and, and, and uh, I had my own life, so it's not that uh, I, uh, they were so very close. We, we had already separated in a certain way, but still, um, uh, yeah, my mother, she has a, there's a kind of uh, dogma that uh, you can only, after this life, go to heaven if you, you go by Jesus. That's one of the, um, the dogmas there. So uh, and my, my mother, I, I don't think she really believes it, but she is also not so convinced that it's, uh, that it's okay. But uh, anyway, she 
tolerates that I what I do. You know, she even visited one time uh, my monastery, and uh, yeah. So my brother, yeah, he also um, he. he uh, in our youth, uh, I have to have my brothers after me, and then I have four younger sisters, so uh, we were f quite close, uh, but we were very different. Uh, we had always debates about, also about society, so uh, uh, he, he would be more close to Trump, and I would be a little bit more to the <laughs> Democrat side, I think, at the end. But anyway, so as monk, I, I'm not engaged in the, in the, in the, in the <laughs> politics, and I don't want to be as well. But anyway, it shows something like oh, sometimes we had these disagreements about these things, and. Um, but uh, yeah, also he, he learned so much in life, I think. Uh, so later he visited me also for three, four, five times in the, in the monastery. So and even he brought all his kids to the monastery a few times and I helped uh, some of them. So um, um, things uh, shift over the years. So uh, but anyway, it's like, uh, uh, like uh, yeah, unlike the Buddha, like uh, he went into a kind of wild life, and uh, you know he had to find his own way. He went from teacher to teacher. Um, yeah, so I went to a monastery, and I, I think um, uh, because it takes a long life, a long time to realize uh, many concepts and uh, change your heart. That your heart moves different when uh, in all kinds of situations when external situations come up that you give another reply, that is another attitude um, in your heart. So that takes quite a lot of time. So in the monastery, we, um, uh, when I came there, there were only 10 monks. It was quite uh, small. Mm, so, and I found it very, um, well, I had to get really used because in, in uh, the, my last 10 years of my work, I, I worked with a lot of doctors and um, uh, politicians and uh, uh, some politicians, I must say, but mainly with uh, project workers and, uh, and uh, nurses and uh, in the prevention, healthcare prevention. And, and we're in general, very nice people, people really looking broad, like uh, what's going on in society, you know, in uh, order to uh, uh, lands cam uh, campaigns against smoking and uh, AIDS and uh, sexual diseases related and uh, um, they went to schools and also they checked children, but uh, there is a kind of uh, attitude that you have to really look what's going on and be very efficient and advise schools. So yeah, this type of people uh, in general were very nice to work with and uh, really it was um, for many years. Uh, and uh, in the monastery I, <laughs> I discovered oh, there was quite some people, uh, yeah, there was not uh, oh, so much harmony always, you know, there was, uh, well, at that moment uh, 10 monks. and. Uh, Mm, yeah, so, so. some thought that they know already so much that they didn't have to go to teachings anymore. And, and for some people, it was very difficult to be harmonious anyway. Like, um, um, yeah, there was one who, who had been alcoholic before. And uh, yeah, at one point he became monk. And I think it's very good. And, and I saw a big development with him uh, over the years. Uh, um, after three years, I discovered, oh, I, I don't think the last year I heard any doors slapping anymore. So, <laughs> but in the beginning, even though he was monk, uh, he could lose his temper and uh, it was not so personal, but it could happen with anyone. So, uh, um, but um, yeah, so the, when I came at, at Nalanda, it was only one building. It was quite dusty. It was uh, not taken care of. There was, it was one monk working very hard on a new building. So uh, he was very disciplined and, uh, I saw also some other monks, there were three, four, I think they, they were nice personalities and, and the others, uh, yeah, they had all big, uh, kind of all kind of issues. So uh, I came in the monastery and uh, I said, mm, I don't know, like, uh, um, yeah, in our tradition, it's a life and choice for life. So I have a big commitment in my heart. So I said like, okay. Uh, I also learned already from my, all my former jobs. The, the first three, four months, you keep your mouth wherever you go. New, you're new. You just adapt. You just see. You observe. You you see what's going on. You see how the relationships are and who is commentary on whom or who is constructive and who is uh, sabotaging sometimes things. So I, I have quite of a observed observative um, attitude in the monastery, and um, yeah. So I, I saw this. Uh, uh, what's going on, you know, so, uh, and I thought that this is not what the teachers want, this is not why you become monk, you know, so I thought uh, we still have a long way to go, so, but anyway, I, I felt um, uh, committed to to help any, anyone and be of service to anyone who I meet in my life, so, um, um, 
yeah, so I think at the, at the end of the first year, I, I was asked to be spiritual program coordinator. So I, I got already a position that I could do some things and could um, be of uh, uh, more intense service. And um, after three years, I was even asked to, buy, to be director. Um, yeah, and then. Uh, um, yeah, so slowly we got a little bit more, and I think we, in the beginning we were really only 10, and slowly we went to 15, 20 people. And then, um, yeah, we, when I became director, I went to the monk who, uh, who built a new building. I said, uh, how long do you think we have, we, you still need? He said, I still, he built a building himself. He, he asked, arranged all the permissions. He uh, did fundraising, and he coached the volunteers or uh, for some things he needed a professional, so then he, he was really amazing. And um, so uh, he said, I, I still need to make, uh, have two more years to make, finish this building. So I said, okay. So uh, then uh, uh, I tried to get really commitment between all the monks to stay two years more before we could really start a study program. I, I wanted to have a good program. And uh, the, in the FPMT, the, our mother organization from Lama Zoprinvice, are very good programs, but it was not implemented in our monastery. The, we, it was just a, we did a little bit what uh, what, what the, some monks who were a little bit yeah they did what they want a little bit. So uh, there was a teacher, but um, it, it was not so structural. So, so and also the teacher was not really happy how it was. So. Uh, so I thought, like, oh, first I have to make the teacher happy. I have to get the community all one direction. And uh, so um, around 2008, we, we could start a study program with about 40 people. And by that time, the building was ready. So we had 16 more bedrooms. And many, we put double beds. And uh, um, yeah, and then we got really a program for five years. And this um, made a big change for the whole monastery, uh, the, this new building plus uh, this uh, program. Uh, because people had really a kind of um, got, um, uh, we got a little bit more a framework for our life. Like uh, being monk is one thing, but then what are you doing? The whole day meditation, or uh, do you do the gardening, or uh, so you still have to do things. Um, so um, yeah, so. Um, then uh, so this five years program. Um, yeah, I was, I was so uh, yeah, really uh, deep happy that this happened because uh, um, uh, being able to study with such a big group, it was not only monks, also nuns could come and also uh, we accepted lay people who paid for the, a little bit more for the course. And by that time we arranged more volunteers, that uh, more volunteers helped to cook and the gardening so that uh, so many people could uh, give their best time to uh, read um, the holy text and uh, reflect on it, have discussion groups. Right? Uh, our study program is not only that you listen to the teachings, it's also discussion and it's also meditations on the topics. And, um, the, and there's an exam every so many weeks, uh, every six weeks. And there's, uh, um, we, we call karma yoga, it's just uh, work for the monastery, but uh, it's a contribution to uh, the community life. And um, this gives so much structure to the whole monastery. And um, after five years, uh, we started the second program. So we started a new basic program again. And uh, we, again, five years, and it came about 30 new people. Maybe a few did, uh, wanted to do five years for the same time, for the second time. And uh, we get a lot of new people. And uh, we started also a master program, which uh, will take seven years. So. Um, and this comes a little slowly closer to this whole, uh, what my Geshe, the, the first teacher of me, who, who, who studied for 18 years. Um, uh, yeah, we, we came a bit closer to such a program. So as monastery still, we have many steps to go. Uh, sometimes people ask, like, uh, and also to ask the teacher, like, uh, oh, why long studies? Why so, so much studies? And then the teacher says, this is nothing. You, this is nothing, you know? Like, even one life is, uh, you know, uh, so studying one life is, uh, is nothing. Like, uh, if we want to become Buddha, it might take, uh, if we, if we re really live ethical and don't create so much problems for our mind ourselves. Um, it, it will take uh, three, four, maybe seven lifetimes, you know. So um, study uh, for these big teachers, uh, five years studies or seven years studies is uh, really nothing. And it's also not like, it, partly it's like studying like in on university, you know, like uh, you have a text. But 
while you study or while you read um, this, this text from these uh, uh, very profound uh, teachers and uh, texts which have such a deep meaning, um, you, you are in connection with it, with the, your, your mind is engaged with the Dharma. It's not, ah, uh, oh, there's the text and uh, I'm here. Yeah, it can, it can work like that, but it can work also that uh, when you do with uh, mindfulness and, uh, yeah, you, you, you are really in touch with the one who wrote the text. And, uh, and of course, we studied uh, some texts which have, uh, um, uh, uh, are really written by recognized uh, kind of holy beings uh, like uh, Shantideva and um, Nagarjuna, uh, the very big, uh, uh, some of the very big teachers of the past. So, yeah, so, and, and uh, uh, well, uh, the, and the Buddha gave instructions how to meditate, so you learn better how to meditate. And the Buddha gave instructions for uh, between the sessions. So, uh, life in an inter our, our monastery has people now in the meantime from, uh, now in the meantime we have about 70 people on a daily basis running around. Uh, maybe about 30 monks, uh, 10 guys who rent a room and who are not monk, but uh, they, they can live in the monastery. And about uh, 10, 15 volunteers. And then uh, quite some women and married people, they live around. Uh, we even have a house for women, but it's uh, one mile away. Then we have some uh, place for women. And also we are part of a, 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 a triangle. There's a Dharma center for the local French people. And there's a nunnery, um, also 10 minutes drive from us. So uh, each has his own of her own function. And uh, we cooperate in a certain way together, but um, uh, our, our monastery uh, offers this uh, full-time uh, study programs. Um, so now in the meantime, uh, I think uh, about 15, 20 people live there now 10 years or longer. And uh, we are now about to buy a pr the next door property. We have almost all the money. Um, so then um, we can uh, also do retreats to so the people even uh, in, in our tradition, group of tradition in general, you, you, the, the accent, accent in the beginning is a little bit more studies and goes more into uh, integration as a main thing and then into uh, retreat at the end of your life uh, and, uh, or maybe even halfway your life to, to actualize uh, what you have studied and also uh, develop uh, like uh, high qualities like uh, concentration in combination with practices and uh, concentration allows you um, to have a lot of peace in mind and also uh, uh, gives you a lot of extra good qualities which uh, which you need to um, uh, also once you understand the wisdom realizing emptiness to to yeah to make such a jump in your personal development that you kind of out of samsara so, uh, and uh, yeah, concentration um, uh, is the base for uh, many other high qualities, uh, uh, which for us uh, in general in daily life, when we, uh, when we don't have these qualities are, are kind of unimaginable. So that's a little bit in, in um, uh, how I live my life a little bit uh, past uh, years. Um, Personally, of course, I don't think everyone has to become a uh, monk. Eh? Like, uh, that was also a little bit one of the other sides. Uh, I mean, the first place, of course, I was doubting, uh, can you relate to my story if I'm raised in Europe and maybe in what other circumstances, but also not everyone uh, needs to become monk or nun. It's, um, there's many, many uh, stories of um, uh, people who, um, were the favorite of their teachers, like Atisha. He, he was a very serious monk, and he, he re-established uh, the monk tradition in uh, in uh, Tibet. But his uh, best student, uh, his uh, attendant, was uh, an uh, Dramtumpa, and he was not monk at all. So, um, so it's not uh, you. you um, people have to become monk or nun. Um, Although it's um, for some people like me, like I think uh, it gives a, a good uh, framework to the life. Like uh, it keeps the, your whole way of thinking and acting in, um, yeah, the, um, in, in a framework which uh, 
allows me uh, to go to kind of to new areas in my mind. So it's, uh, yeah, it avoids that I go too much into patterns. And um, other thing I think one of the advantages once is um, um, because life is of course in general it's difficult. It's uh, we are. Um, Fenerbah Rubina Kurtin, who is a very famous nun in our organization, she says, yeah, all our disturbing emotions are kind of professionals, you know, <laughs> they, they come without that you ask them to come, bang, and they are there, you know, so you don't have to do almost any effort, like patterns come. Uh, yeah, and if we have the pattern, for example, uh, someone uh, um, steals from us something and then we become very angry, you know, uh, it comes, by kind of, it feels like by nature, <laughs> you know. And it feels not like a choice. So, um, to fairly this uh, uh, this awareness, like okay, we, uh, our mind um, uh, has 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 choice to react on uh, in all kind of situations. Um, um, so, and um, to, to understand the depth of our mind and, uh, and realize it, we, we need a lot of reflection time. And of course, many uh, nowadays, the world is like this, that um, it's, uh, when you're a lay person, it does not mean that you have to work uh, crazy or something. That, uh, I think many time, many people have, um, have time to reflect on uh, how, how our mind functions. This is also what the Buddha wanted. The Buddha, when he started to give teachings about the Four Noble Truths, he, he which is the core of, uh, at the end of the Buddhist teachings, he he, re he really asked people to be critical, to use. Uh, it's also what the Dalai Lama said: we have to use our reasoning, we have to use our brains, or we have to use our uh, intelligence. We have the capacity to be intelligent, and um, uh, we should use that to understand how our mind uh, functions and. Um, and uh, that, that takes, um, uh, uh, on different levels, uh, uh, quite some effort. Um, not only, uh, we, we all want to become happy, so I think uh, on this very first level of um, uh, emotions, when patterns come c quite quickly up, uh, if someone uh, gives what we want, a cake, then we are happy, and if someone takes our cake away while well, we were attached, then. Um, we, then aversion comes up. So, on this level of um, how attachment, aversions work based on our ignorance that are somehow in our mental attitude, there's this attachment to. And there's nothing wrong with cakes or uh, eating a cake. Uh, it's not when we have uh, we renounce our life that we cannot be rich or that we have to do our house away or uh, we have to throw the flowers out or something. It's not, there's nothing wrong with flowers or good cheese or it's, it's our mental attitude. There's something waiting for us which uh, can, goes up and down very unbalanced, uh, kind of out of control that, that, that we have no control about. Um, but uh, so we, we, we have to see that aspect. It's kind of a bit refined. It's not because in general, of course, in the West, the renunciation, uh, people think like, oh, may I not have that anymore? Then uh, means that you take my happiness away. And, and this is what we have to see, that this happiness doesn't really depend on the cake or on the car we have, or on the status in the village we have. Or So uh, this is what you have to analyze. Like, uh, this, um, like, uh, yeah, so on, on, on this level, like, what is this I? Like, uh, uh, of course, we, we, everyone wants happiness. Actually, 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 that's the goal of our life. Uh, and then uh, you can even have this goal to become happy for all future lives and, and uh, become, want to become Buddha, that you don't have to go through all these uh, rebirths again. So you can make this uh, very big. But even on, like, there's no sentient being who does not want to be happy. So, uh, of course, happiness is, is, is our drive, um, why we do, uh, choose to do things. And, um, and this is important. Uh, and, but somehow we have to understand like, what mechanisms make us sometimes unhappy, you know? So, and uh, we believe too quickly, like, oh, having this and having that, then I'm happy, and not having this and that, then I'm not happy. And um, there's one very nice book of His Holiness Dalai Lama, it's called uh, The Art of Happiness. And, yeah, and then the Dalai Lama uh, is, a, is a, a lot of interviews with a psychotherapist, American psychotherapist. 
So she asked uh, Dalai Lama on many occasions a little bit about questions where she reflects on how to become happy. And uh, Dalai Lama also gives many, uh, ex starts also like uh, just uh, some recipes to become happy and there's some recipes to become unhappy, you know. And uh, like uh, compare yourself very quickly to others. Now there's a recipe to become unhappy. <laughs> like uh, because uh, there's many nice examples. It's, uh, I think a girl, she, be she became a miss, uh, I don't know from which country anymore. Anyway, and she felt very beautiful because she was chosen number one, you know. Of course she's beautiful, otherwise you don't become miss of your country. But but then she, she went to the Miss Universe and then uh, she, she met all the other misses of the other countries. And then, uh, of course, she projected very quickly two or three who were, she thought is more beautiful. And she felt so ugly. She felt miserable. <laughs> so anyway, this is an example. And also people like uh, in your daily life, you can, uh, and, you, and you have a good job, uh, and, uh, yeah, you, you get paid. And then you hear, hear from uh, someone else, a same, same position, it gets, uh, so much more, you know. <laughs> you, th you, you think like, now oh, I'm not happy with my money anymore, like what I get, you know. Like uh, you, when you when you don't c take care for your mind, what's happening with your mind, it can easily happen, you know. Like uh, because we compare ourselves with others. First we're satisfied, but suddenly you know, my brother-in-law, my brother earns more. I, I'm a loser. I'm uh, not, uh, you know. We, we think, oh, we're not uh, assertive enough, and uh, you know, so we become unhappy. So. Uh, Anyway, the art of happiness, it's, uh, uh, it's very interesting to see how our mind functions uh, in a day-to-day -day basis and uh, where we get attached to and when, when uh, unhappiness slips in. Because if we keep too long on um, that we think really happiness comes from outside and from... Um, uh, to, to a certain extent, our mind is also not really, at the end, satisfactory at all. Like, uh, like with one p nice piece of cake, yeah, then, uh, you would think, oh, then you have enough cake for the rest, you know, but no, you, uh, actually the body has enough, but you think like, yeah, but the second piece of cake would bring me really happiness, you know. And uh, until there comes an, uh, a moment that it uh, goes into its opposite, you know, and it starts to get suffering. And um, it's very difficult to be to uh, to guard contentment with uh, what we have, it's, and um, guard the basic peace. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Then on. Um, so yeah, and if people continue in this way, like uh, happiness comes from outside, uh, uh, yeah, the, it's said by some some practitioners or pra teacher I heard also say there's a strong connection with becoming depressed. Like uh, um, uh, anyway, so the, uh, because at the end we, we don't we cannot always get what we want, and uh, and it also starts to get bored. Even if you get <laughs> children who get uh, are used to get from their parents everything they want, they start also to get bored at one point. It's not that they are much more happy than other children. Actually, it's not the case at all. So um, um, yeah, so they, they, we have to work with our mind and uh, and and. Uh, uh, see like what is the power of our mind that can we can we make choices you know even on a very very day-to-day uh, -day basis to guard our uh, peace and uh, we, got, we got our uh, contentment uh, because only when that is okay then we can even have bigger goals like uh, uh, like we, we, in, in Buddhism we, we talk about bodhicitta this very big love compassion that we do all activities for the welfare of our sentient beings so this will be quickly uh, quickly broken off if, if we uh, work with these eight worldly concerns the whole time that we strive for uh, pleasure and worldly pleasure and sense pleasures and um, yeah so we, we can lose all our time you know with uh, just listening to music instead of uh, helping others or uh, you can have this wish but then there's no time for it actually so you get uh, kind of frustrated uh, if you have uh, too high um, ambitions also for your uh, mental development. So, so yeah, so, um, yeah, anyway, the, the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths. I think that's the, the core. And uh, yeah, one of the reasons I I, uh, I was not so, I could not find my way so much in the science is uh, uh, also because they, uh, 
they, they don't have this knowledge, what I later found with, uh, with uh, where I was looking for, like this control over our own mind, this questioning who are we and um, how do things exist? Even the I exists, you know, like, uh, because in, in the science, it's, it is uh, a long time, uh, and they believe that things come from the brain. And of course, there's uh, now a, a lot of research, and it's very helpful, they, they, they can come many helpful uh, uh, things from uh, uh, scientific research, like if you have had headache, uh, now you can, can take this medicine, and you have, take, you have that problem, you can take that medicine, so it's very helpful. And, um, um, but uh, for some, many scientists, they think like what, uh, that our mind depends completely on the brain, of actually that uh, our brain is the cause of our mind. And um, uh, the big Buddhist teachers and uh, the, who did uh, who, who reached uh, enormous uh, realizations in the past in India, they didn't know anything about the brain. In order to become happy, you don't need uh, to know everything about the brain. Um, you need you need actually to know what what how our mind functions. You know, and there's this this uh, kind of confusion. Like uh, here, here's light and. Um, and this light here, what we see, is, depends indeed on the, on the voltage in the wall, on the wires, and then the bulb. And so there's all these cause conditions, and then, yes, there's light. So for us humans, uh, our mind, uh, at the time of conception with our father and mother, then uh, sperm and egg came together, and then our mind um, uh, got caught up here in this construction. So for us, yes, for us, uh, the way that I can, the, the reason, one of the cause conditions I can speak here is, uh, is th that um, <laughs> my brain is functioning to a certain extent, you know, I'm not that intelligent, but still um, I can speak with a kind of reasoning, you know. And, um, but it's not the main cause, uh, because the, the I existed uh, already before. So, um, and also, the, this light is not all light. There's many other sources of light. So there's also sunlight. So the so mind does not have to be automatically dependent on the human body. It can also be an animal body or can be without a body. So uh, I try always to make these comparisons to understand that a mind is uh, by nature different than uh, than. Uh, our physical side, uh, it, it, um, it goes uh, even up subtle level, subtle body and subtle mind, yeah, they have a big connection. Uh, if my mind, if my body doesn't function very well, then uh, it has, connect, has, an, has an, uh, has influence on my performance, on my concentration or uh, meditation and so forth, whatever we do. Um, but uh, there's two different things, even if they come on a very subtle level uh, uh, together. So, and in Buddhism, mind uh, is uh, defined as a clear and knowing. So it's like a very clear uh, mirror where all phenomena uh, can be mirrored. So if you close your eyes and you think of a frog, you can, yeah, the mind gets a kind of aspect of a frog. You can think of a cow, can think of a door, can think of a house, and can think all phenomena uh, can be reflected, all phenomena, abstract phenomena, organization. We have a kind of image with what is organization or something, you know? So clear and knowing. So it can reflect and it can know. So it, uh, um, so in, in mind, is in, in Buddhism, is uh, all our aspects from the I, from the me, from the person, which is not physical. So it's uh, the feelings or uh, sensory, uh, sensory uh, perception. It's uh, to every phenomena in the whole universe, we have three types of feelings and can change as well. So it's good feelings, neutral, and um, uh, uh, bad feelings or aversion. So to any phenomena we meet, uh, we, uh, like uh, we go around the corner and then we see a phenomena uh, very quickly, it, it comes almost like an attachment in the email, you know? We get an email, some has attachment. So we see if only a fraction of a second of reality and then we project uh, good feelings or bad feelings or neutral feelings, you know, on it. Like uh, if you had a fight with someone and this person, uh, you meet around the corner, quite quickly bang, the, there comes this attachment with it, you know, like, oh, it's not so nice to meet this person because we still have not agreement or we have no peace with each other or something, you know. 
So, um, and uh, yeah, you need a nice person, or, uh, you know, uh, so depend it really depends on our mind also. So there's feelings, there's uh, um, uh, discrimination, there's, um, um, there's uh, consciousness, so uh, the fact that we are conscious about things, um, and uh, um, yeah, th then there's all kinds of other factors, like uh, um, we say compositional factors. Uh, like uh, our karma, or habits, uh, um, culture, uh, cultural influences. Then they, they define like all these aspects, define what, what is our mind. So it's good to think about it because uh, we, we very quickly talk the whole day about our I, you know, or, you t or me, you know, you touch me, and then we refer to the body, or you hurt me, then we, we, ref um, we reflect to our consciousness or our feelings. Uh, I don't like this. Uh, like, uh, so um, we, we speak about many, many aspects of our, our, our self, you know. So it's good to be aware, like, uh, because uh, um, they say already with pain management, like uh, if you have pain here, that it's better to say I have pain in my hand than I have pain. I have pain is kind of overwhelming. <laughs> so very undefined and you're in the middle of the flame almost. But if you say, ah, oh, I have pain there, that makes the problem already a bit smaller. And, and more precise, and it's more easier to handle. So it's also with um, knowing where we're talking about when, uh, when who is this I who has, um, uh, yeah, uh, has so much experiences and has so much um, uh, going on, and there's so much f sides of it, like physical and uh, mental sides. Um, so it's a, uh, in order to know who we are. Uh, we have to look into it. Uh, I think that tonight is a little bit too short to go too deep into it. But um, yeah, anyway, I try to, for new public, always to touch the three principles of the past in one way or another. It's renunciation, like uh, not going to in all um, the eight world pleasures and so forth, right, to make life more meaningful. And um, also to make more of my life meaningful is when we develop our love and compassion for others. Uh, makes life much more rich and uh, broad, and uh, it's much easier to be happy uh, when uh, others are part of our our strife and uh, and um, uh, yeah. Um, we can become closer to our ultimate nature in a certain way. And uh, also a little bit of uh, wisdom realizing emptiness, that there's no uh, ultimate thing in itself, you know. Like uh, if we, we, we analyze the table, so where's the table? Then some people say, oh yeah, but this part, that part, and that part totally is, makes the table. Then I say, okay, you, I put a part here, I put a part there, and a part there. So and then I ask someone, bring me the table. Then they say, there's no table. <laughs> you know, there's this, there's this, but there's no table. So, you know, so. Uh, you cannot say, oh, because this, this totally makes the table. So, also, like, uh, if this part, can you call this table? Uh, you know, is there a table in the table? Like, is, uh, it, it does the cells of the table define this tableness somehow in the table? You know, so, well, where is actually the table? So, so it's uh, interesting because at, at the end, um, so uh, the, the table is a kind of concept, comes from mind. And it's, it's, it's just put on a kind of base, like a, a base where we all agree on. When there's an object, we can put water on or uh, flowers or we can eat uh, at that thing. And we could put things on it, then we call it a table. There's a kind of definition. And then, uh, then we can say, okay, there's a table. But it's not, not there's, kind of, there's a kind of base, but it's not uh, a an, an concrete inner end table in the outside world. So. And we make, uh, in general, our whole reality quite concrete in the <laughs> inner end existence. You know, enemies are really enemies. And um, so, uh, one aspect of the table is also it's very impermanent. It's already the base of going into emptiness, is really uh, understanding uh, that, uh, yeah, constructed phenomena or impermanent phenomena, they are really impermanent. So, there's the three times in the table. Uh, um, so maybe this whole table was first part of a big tree, and then there was an artist who, who, who put, took a lot of wood away, so that it became flat and took here a little bit more foot away. But before it, actually, we called just a trunk of a tree, you know, the same thing. 
but uh, now because there has been some wood taken away and then you yeah, you, you call it uh, now yeah, you, you say this is now table this is really a table <laughs> you know but yeah yeah but uh, yeah tomorrow uh, someone takes this chunk off and needs some firewood and then throws in the food and it's firewood you know so so the fact that um, uh, you know uh, it seems like um, that's maybe not so much importance, but uh, when you really uh, think about uh, how we, uh, uh, that actually there's a kind of selflessness of the table. There's no table in the table itself. It's, it came from mind. It's constructed by mind. It's labeled uh, based also on, uh, on conventions. So it's, we call it conventional truth. The table exists conventionally. Yes, there's a table, you know. And also this is not a window or it's not a carpet. This is a table. So conventionally, yes, but ultimately we look for truth. Like sometimes I say, like we are Buddhists, we, we are truth seekers. What is the truth? Where is it exactly? You know. So uh, and when you close your eyes, is the table in your mind or something? You know, like because you can still. So um, is there really a table outside? You know. So and this is uh, not only for external phenomena, but also for the I. You know, like where is this I? What what makes you I existing uh, as always? You know, so it's uh, uh, on the physical level we can already see like red uh, blood cells are replaced by new ones, and uh, we do some sports, we get new blood cells, and then uh, you know, so uh, also the. So all the cells of our body are changing. So if we go back, say, 10, 10 years ago, we had many other cells, you know? And then we go even longer back. And actually, maybe we had in the beginning a body with all the cells which you don't have now anymore at all. But that, still you say, that was my body, and now it's, this is my body, you know? It's, it's, um, there's, you cannot find the essence of your body in your body. Like, there's not something which was... Because you say, like, when you see a photo of yourself, and I say, is it you? Yeah, yeah, that was me. You know, I was 10 years, and then, yeah, but uh, it's complete other, <laughs> other bodies and other base, and still, you know, now, we are, where, where are we now? You know, this, this is now my base. So, and uh, you can also say, ask yourself, like, are there two me, you know? Is there the mental me and there's the physical me? You know, is there, is there not two persons? Can we not say there's two persons? Because, so, um, yeah. So, um, and these are uh, really interesting things to, <laughs> to think about, you know, like, uh, because we think that we know reality, and uh, the question is if we understand reality very well, you know, if we, if we want to become wise, we have to, uh, to think. Yeah, so because uh, in, in Buddhism we reason that uh, uh, in Tibet where people believed automatic in uh, reincarnation, and based, uh, two, there's two bases, is the, um, there's the, the logic side and there's the living side, like the living side, like you, yeah, you, we have now the 14th Dalai Lama, so there was the 13th, you know, and there's a whole procedure how to find reincarnation, there's the whole, um, uh, uh, yeah, so it, it's, and then he, he get tests and, um, and then many times it's very obvious that he knows so many things from his former life and, and that, that the, 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 the continuation is consciousness. The, the old guy died and then the, this young kid, he knows almost everything. So uh, when he was found on, he was two, three years, uh, the, the teacher who looked for him, uh, he put on the, the ropes of uh, the clothes of uh, his attendant and the attendant took on the clothes of the teacher with, with the monk ropes. And uh, when the Dalai Lama was uh, two or three years old, he lived on the countryside, and, uh, and his teacher was uh, was uh, coming. He immediately had to smile. Ah, oh, you, you make a fool. You think I'm a fool? You are the teacher. So he, he prostrated for his teacher, who had uh, the lay clothes on. You know, so he, he reckoned like uh, like we. You know, when we didn't see our brother or sister for two years, and then uh, we see each other again, we recognize each other. And it was the Dalai Lama, exactly the same. So and as hundreds of stories a little bit like this, you know, like where it's obvious that the former reincarnation. So that makes it for the Tibetans a kind of logic that is, uh, um, that there's a reincarnation and there's, uh, our, our consciousness was already connected before, but was already existent before our conception in this life. And then there's the side of the reasoning, like, um, um, 
one seed uh, gives a particular cause, like the seed of a rose gives a, uh, is the cause for a rose, and uh, the seed of a tulip uh, gives a tulip, and not the other way around. It's not uh, so. The, the, it must be a connection between cause and the, uh, the result, the cause condition and the result. So physical things have physical causes. So, and our body, we get from a father, mother. That's very obvious. I think everyone agrees. And then the mind, which is not physical, has complete other nature, is the nature of knowing. And, um, um, must have cause in mind itself. That's the way of reasoning. Otherwise, the, it's abracadabra, stim salabim. There's, you know, there's uh, no cause conditions, and then there's mind. You know, there was no mind, there was no mind before, but now suddenly, we have, without cause conditions, uh, mind. And, uh, so that uh, is not logic. So um, and, uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, Tibetans uh, very quickly believe in um, uh, love and, and, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, reincarnation. And anyway, I bring, the, bring this up in the context of um, yeah, who we are, uh, the, how we have to reflect on, on, on uh, on the I, the, the me, where we talk about um, the, the I, me, we want to develop. So, anyway, I think uh, for uh, just coming here for one night, uh, I, I cannot go t too much into uh, depth in uh, one topic or another. I try to, to, um, to touch a little bit on the philosophy, a little bit my connection, why I um, ended up being a monk and uh, want to give my life to holy beings. Uh, I see uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Lama Zopranich's holy beings. There are more on the planet, but somehow I, I ended up with them. And somehow, um, yeah, um, um, yeah, so I, I, I'm aware, and I did not go maybe into all topics, into details, and there might be many questions. I, I don't know, can, can we have still some questions? Yes? What, what time do we have to stop? What was announced? 8.30. It so it means a 12, 13 minutes question. So that's good. Yeah. Yes? Thank you very much for your exposing yourself and your history. I'm curious about a couple of things you raised. First of all, why do you think in retrospect that you had trouble with school at the beginning and didn't finish high school until you were about 25? Sounds like you had a good family. And that would be unusual, but I am understanding in Holland, mm -hmm. not to, to drop out of high school. But ah, yes, yes, I'm yes. I'm curious why you thought of that. And the other thing is, what, do you, what is the ultimate goal of Buddhism? That is, the ultimate goal of Christianity is to live forever, forever after death, you know, by believing in Jesus. So to yes, speak. yes. So that's not, I don't believe that that's a goal of Buddhism. Buddhism is, seems to be the primarily how to maximize the value of being a human being and maximum happiness and fulfillment while we're on Earth. Yes. Rather, I'm just curious about what do you feel is the maximum a Buddhist is striving for and how do they know when they achieve or getting closer to that point? Mm -hmm. Is it happiness primarily for personal fulfillment? Or is it knowing mm -hmm. how to use your brain to, to be content? No, the ultimate goal in Buddhism, because it, uh, samsara is described as the human realm, uh, kind of god realm, demigod realm, uh, spirit realm, animal realm, and hell realm, and there's a life between going from one to the other, which you call kind of bardo time. A realm, like a, a world, kind of uh, the, this human world. There's the animal world. And we can also realm. We, we say realm in general, but uh, yeah, it's kind of world. It's kind of six worlds, and, and there's the risk to go to lower uh, worlds. So we believe not that there's a kind of permanent after uh, after uh, death. So um, even going to a, a very good state, like a god realm, uh, god state. Um, depends on uh, what kind of God state you go. Like if you think that there's all kind of pleasure, more pleasure than here. Uh, in Buddhism, we believe that you then uh, use all your positive karma. You know? So there's many stories like uh, students of a big teacher and he, and he died too young and then uh, he, he went to uh, heaven, kind of uh, God state. And, uh, and he had so much pleasure that, he, that uh, the teacher had, uh, had uh, the possibility to go with his mind to the, manifest himself in the, in the heaven. 
and um, yeah, the, the student was sitting on a horse and had fun with ladies, and he had no no interest for the teacher anymore. You know, so uh, it's a kind of it, it's there's more pleasure and there's more um, more yeah uh, less worries, and and it's heaven. It's, it's described in Buddhism as a very pleasurable state. It's 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 uh, one of the highest states. Still, people can use their intelligence, but many don't use it. Like uh, many on the beach, they they. Uh, here also sometimes you think like oh, it's kind of heaven realm, you know, like a, like when I was in Miami Beach and many people, they just want to have fun and, and they only want to think of the sun and do I want ice cream or do we want a pizza or, you know, just follow desires. And uh, so... One time I read one time that Buddha or some high figure in Buddhism like him said, I don't know what happens before birth or after death, but I can show you how to swim successfully across the river of life. Mm. Maybe that's not true. So I appreciate yeah, the river of life then would mean and uh, going out of samsara that, that then uh, life gets into such a state that you don't have to unnecessarily be reborn. You get control over your mind. At the end, in Buddhism, it's very important that somehow we get control over what our mind. Um, developing high concentration, and this is not possible without a, a not ethical life. So that's why ethics, ethics is also uh, promoted. And then uh, becoming Buddha, like uh, uh, because even if you if you are out of samsara, there's a kind of uh, traditions who promote only to be then in a kind of eternal eternal meditation, kind of, but for oneself. And there's a tradition of, uh, even if you're out of samsara, even if you're here in a nice building and you know that your father, mother, or daughter, or son is in the building beside, and there's fire in the other building, you don't think like, oh, I'm, I'm so happy, I'm so comfortable. No, you run out and you see what you can do for your, uh, the people you feel close with. So that's why we have to develop very high, um, Connect, feel con connected with others and love compassion for everyone, not only for the ones who do nice to us or who by, dis by chance this life are uh, connected with us, or father, mother, or children, or family members, or friends. We also want to bring neutral people to enlightenment and even those who are temporarily our, en our enemies that can all change in, in this lifetime even. So we want to bring everyone to enlightenment and that so, and then there's also other type of heavens where there's kind of Buddhas in uh, some Buddhist traditions, like the Pure Land Buddhism in China is, for example, uh, it's a strong example. They, they, uh, they do Amitabha Buddhist practice. They want to go to an Amitabha Buddha land. There's a kind of heaven where there's a Buddha and they teach them further and, and they will use this heaven to, to at the end, help, help come back uh, on after many lives to the earth and help others. So they, they want to become Buddha, but they want to take it a bit slowly. And um, they, 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 make, uh, they do all kind of good deeds, and they dedicate all their good deeds, like uh, being generous, helping out. They, they do Amitabha, Amitabha practice, and they say, like, oh, maybe become Buddha. They create all the cause conditions to be in such a heaven. So, but in, in the way, like, yeah, in, in, uh, in uh, Christianity, I found it also a bit strange. Oh, everything is impermanent, and then you come in a heaven which is eternal. And, but in, in Buddhist terms, it's, it looks like eternal because uh, in, in, in life in a God realm, when you're God, it's, it's, uh, it's compared to our life 800 years or 1,000 years, so it looks very long, you know? So it's, yeah. But in the Buddhist scriptures, it said like at the end of a God realm life, uh, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when they, f they finish uh, their good karma, so they, they, they are there because they, were, they have done good deeds, they had good karma to be there. Um, because they have this pleasure, there's always good karma for uh, for happy, happy, happy experiences. But at uh, one point it finishes. It's like uh, you can be a millionaire, but if you take every day uh, three hundred dollars, and, uh, and after eight hundred years it will be finished. You know, it's like uh, it's nothing for a millionaire three hundred dollars. But um, but still, all this good karma. Uh, kind of, there's kind of a, they say it's described as a lot of parties, and uh, there's only. But by, by the end of the life in the God realm, then uh, the God, gods start to also smell, and then the other gods, they don't like that, you know? Uh, uh, and then uh, they get a bit, uh, and, and they, they get um, prevision that the next life will be in a, in a hell realm, so, because all the good karma is finished, so they, they end up very poor, like, uh, and it's very, very, uh, very uh, sad state. So this is a little bit how Buddhists look at, uh, at uh, different uh, states of, uh, being, yeah. Yes. Well, then, uh, what is the purpose of meditation? The 
purpose of meditation. You, you can have many purposes with meditation, so it depends on what your, your primary well, goal is. Is there a single prime purpose for meditation? To, med Singer. to, to meditate. Now, for a beginner, I think uh, in general, uh, when people think like, oh, okay, uh, maybe I start to meditate, you know, it's to get already a little bit more peace of mind. Like uh, many people experience, they have no control over what's happening in their mind and their emotions, and um, uh, or they, they don't find a purpose anymore. They run behind their agendas, and uh, they feel like, okay, okay, I really need to stop this kind of, you know. So. Um, being in touch with oneself <laughs> can be already then a kind of rich experience, you know. So, um, so yeah, so um, I think I, I, I do, uh, if you study a little bit more and read more about wisdom and about, then, um, then also your meditations will become at the end more rich. But uh, already for a beginner, yeah, just like maybe a, a, this, we said at the start a session also, just with a very short meditation, it's really nice, it's peaceful, you're in touch, you, st you, you stop judgments. You are in a moment. You forget your what, you, what just where you came from and all the worries uh, from your house, and then you 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 forget the agenda for um, for tomorrow. You just ah, I'm there, you know. So time for for myself or for my experience, you know. That's already very nice, and then you can build it up, um, make a daily practice of it in the morning, evening, and it really really affects your mind. And if you can then on top of that have some good thoughts, like may I use my life today, you know, for, uh, in a constructive way for the benefit of others. May I diminish uh, slowly over time my anger and jealousy and you know, all these painful emotions. And instead of, may I more rejoice in whatever, uh, whatever people have, whatever beauty there is, whatever. So I, I will try to uh, and have a little bit more love, compassion just for uh, everyone I meet on the street, you know. You can do more uh, profound analytical meditations about equanimity, for example. How in life in general, uh, friends become neutral, neutral people become friends, uh, neutral people become enemies, enemies become neutral, and uh, even sometimes we are married with people, they become our enemies, and enemies become suddenly, if we understand them suddenly well, that they become our friends. And then you have a bit more already, you can add this to the calmness of the mind and understand, ah, oh, this is how reality functions, and this I should avoid to grasp too much to only my friends, and I should be more equ equ equanimity to, in loving kindness and attention to what comes to my dish, you know? So, um, um, so the, yeah, the meditation you can build up, and there's uh, uh, there's a concentration meditation, and then there's uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so you can build up your concentration longer. So for some people, uh, it's a practice in itself, and then for um, others, they can uh, yeah, you can make it an analytical meditation. Just the example what I give, or um, so there's many uh, topics like death and impermanence, like. Uh, we automatically think that we are tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning there, and then tomorrow evening there, and you know. But uh, we don't know, you know. So it can be accidents. Like my life, my heart can stop t tonight, you know. So uh, it's impermanent. So it means, and then uh, I, I need to use my time well uh, in the context of uh, my big goal: is uh, enlightenment or <laughs> maybe liberation for other people, or at least. Uh, uh, have good future experiences and future good future experiences it means that you uh, all your activities with body speech and mind which are based on love compassion generosity uh, patience um, understanding uh, that will lead to happiness experiences this is what the buddha said and all uh, killing lying stealing sexual misconduct uh, you know uh, uh, bad speech, uh, getting friends separated from each other, and this leads to problems in our future. So that's what, uh, what the Buddha said. So, yeah, so you can uh, meditate, um, and uh, some people are, yeah, uh, start from scratch and uh, need a lot of perseverance to get a bit results. For other people, got quite quickly, it depends on your previous imprints from last lives and so on. And also on your ethical life, uh, Ethics is really, uh, you know, there's instructions for meditation in between. If we make a lot of mess in our daily life and uh, fights, how can we expect peaceful meditations? It's not, it's not possible. So um, all our choices in our life uh, contribute to 
um, yeah, also the quality of our meditations. But it's some, of course, it's a very nice if you can manage to do every morning meditation for yourself and set the motivation and, and know that it's all mind. All our relationships are comes from our own mind. Um, and uh, yeah, be open to surprises and. Uh, you know, then we let go of uh, strong patterns of special negative emotions. So, yeah, then uh, and even evening. Uh, so, dedicating the night and also now at the end of the session, we, we dedicate most whatever we've actions we've done with the body, speech, and mind. Like, uh, may all uh, be, uh, people benefit from it in the future in, what, in one way or the other. Yeah, we, in general, we dedicate for the holy beings. May all their wishes be fulfilled. So, um, and then uh, I, I try always every day to dedicate for my father and mother because due to them I'm here, you know, my father died already very long ago, but um, uh, he, he, yeah, he can be a guy or a woman or in other realm for now 35 years or something. So, um, yeah, but I, I still dedicate every day to my father and mother. My mother is still alive on this planet, so. Yeah, because uh, without them, it's not, I was not here. I could not have done anything. I could not have done my work, or I could have not, not you know. Yeah. There's nothing was uh, so father, mother, and then of course for the other people, uh, for all sentient beings, and then sometimes in particular for those you know, they have now difficulties. They, they are in an essential stage of their life, or they look now for a new rebirth. Uh, in, in Tibetan Buddhism, we say the last seven weeks of um, as someone that passed away, within seven weeks you get a new rebirth. So it's an essential time for this person. So we we, get, we can help to uh, uh, create some merit for them and dedicate. So we, um, and other people, you know, you everyone has people around them uh, who have uh, problems. <laughs> So we can dedicate those who have problems. So when you say you're dedicating, it's as if I'm saying as a Christian, I'm praying for you, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. You create, uh, you create a gift. You create a gift, like uh, actually you, you create a merit and you... Yeah. you, you uh, it strikes me that you're saying live in the moment, not mm. judgmentally, just live in the moment. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in meditation you do like that, but of course you have also your intelligence, so you can uh, reflect on things, and uh, <laughs> we also have to use sometimes our intelligence. <laughs> you, you never mentioned my first question about why you dropped out. Ah, okay. I don't know why I'm actually dropped out. I think I was just lazy. Yeah, but I also built up some walls due to things like uh, I discovered very young that I was gay and. Uh, Anyway, I, I, I was not really bullied or something, and I was still was in the, uh, okay in the group, and I had my position. But still, I, I've also built up walls, I think. Uh, yeah, but uh, maybe it's also just laziness, I don't know, <laughs> at that moment. I think the rest of your family didn't drop out. The rest of your brother no, the rest of my brother and sister did not drop out later, no, no, no. So, but, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, but due to that dropping out, yeah, I, um, I had to work on a factory and then I later work on the office and, uh, and uh, I found my way, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Well, obviously you're an intelligent, very intelligent man. I was just curious why high school didn't you really go? Yeah, I think uh, I, I, I was lazy. <laughs> and uh, also when I came home from, uh, I remember that I was just very tired and I later I, I, I labeled it and maybe I built up walls like, uh, uh, playing a role, or uh, you know, like um, doing what people are, what is expected from you, but there's no inner connection, kind of. So um, yeah, uh, I also sometimes I just as uh, yeah, I think um, I took it so easy also because I think I, I did not feel any urge. Like I, I had a very nice father and mother in a certain way, and. Um, yeah, you know, and the life was, uh, I did not dare to think too much of the future. I had no, uh, it was nothing was pulling me. Like, uh, I want to become this, I want to become like that. So, yeah, so, uh, and like, for example, I like history, but I, I only listen to the stories and I fantasy and I daydream and then uh, I get uh, uh, not enough marks for history. It's just like, it's, this it was not that I did not like it or something, but uh, yeah, anyway, that was my, my personal thing. Like, was there also a question? Somebody is 
yes. And I always, I sort of, I go, yeah, well, I'm, I'm it's almost like it's a compliment, and then, and then uh, I'm not an old soul. <laughs> so I go, all right, where does that leave me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah. Before I was Buddhist, I also for a while I did not talk all that. But uh, I, I went also sometimes to clairvoyant people, you know, like when I was in my uh, around thirty or so at that time. And uh, I went to clubs and I was with dancing tables and so you know with spirits and so like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And I, I met many people. Oh, yeah, my, my former life, I was this, and I was a prince, and I was a princess. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's so very helpful and beneficial to know all the past. Like, even in this life, you know, it's good to, to know like, where do you come from somehow, you know. But uh, the most important is your future. Just, uh, so we work, uh, we call, create now the course conditions for tomorrow. Now, by the way you're thinking, the way you act, the, the activities you do, you define tomorrow. And um, so, yeah, the, if you do mind training, you know, we can have, we have a better and brighter future than um, if you're not aware of anything. We just uh, like kind of animals; we just <laughs> react on impulses and so on. So, uh, yeah, personally, that's my <laughs> my very practical approach to life. Is uh, tomorrow is more important than the past? Like uh, still the past, of course. I, I'm committed to my family members. I see them every year, two or three times, and you know, I I, um, I call them or send emails. So I'm committed to what I'm committed to. Um, so take care for continu continuity, but <laughs> tomorrow is important, and not uh, especially not last lives. Uh, and many lamas, they said, uh, uh, you know, just uh, look at your dreams and uh, your life. You can see what kind of life you had. The fact that you're a human, it means already that you have quite some good karma. Uh, so, um, like, if, if you've liked a lot of night nightmares about certain things, like uh, like uh, eating by a rat, yeah, you might have killed uh, rats in the past somehow, you know, so you don't know. And actually, it's less important exactly. So. Only the Buddha said, like, uh, yeah, bad experiences or bad, really suffering from that, you know, from these bad dreams. Yeah, it might be negative karma. But anyway, it, it goes away. It's, uh, it's not part of the I. Like, uh, that's, that's why it's so important to think about uh, the, uh, who are we, you know, even if we become re regularly anger. But anger is not part of the, uh, your mind. It's, it's like a stain on the clothes, but it's not the, 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 you know, you do it in the washing machine and the stain is gone. And uh, with the anger, if it would be really, really part of you, then, then uh, you know, then uh, you would always be angry. But now the anger of uh, last year is gone and uh, it's not part of you, you know. So it's uh, and the same with last life. So, um, so it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a part of our continuation. And, uh, um, but, uh, there's kind of universal principles to adapt, and that, that's much, many more important to, to focus on. Like, to, uh, if I evaluate a day, like, uh, did I, was I a good person today? Did I do my job well? Uh, did I think of others? Or did I do it only to, uh, to become rich and uh, at the cost of others? Or, uh, you know? So, um, yeah, I think that, that's... Uh, Anyway, that's my practical approach, but uh, maybe there's other approaches as well. But that's <laughs> how I would, <laughs> uh, how I stand in, uh, in reality. Thank you very much. Thank you. So anyway, let me dedicate now to the <laughs> that all the wishes of holy beings may be fulfilled, and then we dedicate to our father, mother, uh, wherever they are. Uh, may they be happy and may they develop their uh, wisdom to that extent that they will be forever um, uh, without suffering. May we dedicate to all the people who asked us to do prayers for them or who we carry in our heart. We can dedicate to world peace, to all the, may all the presidents of the world have the altruistic uh, attitude that they really use their positions for to uh, with a wish that uh, that uh, the people they serve that uh, they will be happy. And then for all the people we know who are sick, who have cancer, or those who have passed away recently, people 
who have so much problems, they're not having homes like in Iraq and Iran. People have, are victims of earthquakes, of fires. And for our own development, maybe develop the ultimate love and compassion, patience and generosity for all sentient beings. And maybe develop the wisdom which understands all phenomena as it is. And uh, I would like to thank you very much for all your effort to come here and listening. <laughs> I hope there's even a little spark of uh, some hair that you can remember and that it benefits you. And uh, forgive me for, <laughs> for everything that was not clear. So, and have a good continuation. Thank you. Uh, if you want to, uh, I have my business cards on the on piano, piano there. So if you want me to mail later, then you can find uh, some information and also about the monastery. Thank you. <laughs>